What do you want? It's not that simple. What it's... do you want? Money! What are you talking? He's got a lot of money! Now I hate you, Harry, son of a bitch! How do you make $200,000 a year as a physician assistant or a nurse practitioner? Those of us who know anything about the fields of physician assistant and nurse practitioner know that we make about $100,000 a year to start. Sometimes in the high 90s, maybe in certain specialties, especially for new grads, but about $100,000, $120,000 a year is usually about average. However, there are definitely physician assistants and nurse practitioners that make close to 200, 200, over 200, and I've even heard of some PAs and NPs that can make close to $300,000 a year. My name is Boris, I'm a physician assistant, and in this video, I'm going to talk about the specialties that I personally have heard of that can be paid close to $200,000 per year as a physician assistant or nurse practitioner. And we're also going to go through this article from uh, beckershospitalreview.com called Highest Paid Specialties for PAs. Ready? Let's do it. So this is in no way a comprehensive list. This is definitely not from the AAPA salary report or anything official, but just from my personal experience, from knowing and talking to a lot of physician assistants, nurse practitioners, being in the field, uh, kind of being in this community for a number of years at this point and talking to lots and lots and lots of providers, I have noticed that cardiothoracic surgery tends to be the top dog for whatever reason overall, uh, for people reliably making close to, if not more than $200,000 a year. Uh, there's lots and lots of different sub, uh, surgical subspecialties. Neurosurgery can pay quite a bit. General surgery can pay quite a bit for PAs, just depending on what you get into. But for whatever reason, cardiothoracic surgery just lines up in a way that the physician assistant is allowed to do a lot of different stuff. They're allowed to bill a lot of different stuff, and therefore they can get paid quite a bit. Obviously not as much as a cardiothoracic surgeon, but for whatever reason, cardiothoracic surgery tends to be one of the top paid physician assistant specialties year over year over year. And the people that do practice it tend to really like it. You know, it's very gratifying being able to isolate an artery and do it very well, sometimes more quickly than the surgeon. And it's like this hyper competitive, like surgical environment. And it's really cool. Some people really do seem to like it. And the way you get into that specialty is you try to find a job as a PA in cardiothoracic surgery. Now it's probably very competitive because it's such a high paid career and it's also very difficult. Uh, so maybe some experience in general surgery or another surgical subspecialty might be a good idea and might help you get a job in this specialty. But when picking a job as a physician assistant, we usually say you get to pick two out of the three. So specialty, location, or salary. So if you're really set on this particular specialty, which does have a high salary, uh, if you're able to move, if you're willing to move anywhere in the country where there's an opening for this kind of a position, you will likely be able to get one because PDAs are constantly retiring, quitting, changing specialties, you know, for whatever reason. So if cardiothoracic surgery is what you really, really, really want, and you want that $200,000 a year paycheck, uh, then kind of search, open your search terms up to all over the country and see if you can find a job in cardiothoracic surgery. Another physician assistant and nurse practitioner specialty that is consistently at the top rankings of compensation, people who make the most money, um, close to 200, 200, over $200,000 a year, even sometimes up to 300. The funny money in PA and NP careers tends to be made by dermatology uh, PAs and NPs. Why that is, is because you're independent a lot of the time, you're doing a lot of billable procedures, and a lot of times you're doing tons of them, 20, 30, 50, 100 a day. And of course, billing for every single one of these. So basically, if you see a theme here, Anything where the PA is kind of more independent and gets to bill a lot more uh, by themselves, not just under their physician, uh, and where the things where the things that they do take less time and they just get those numbers in once they get really good at it, that's where the big bucks can really come in. So for dermatology, it's a lot of procedures, it's a lot of very quick visits, uh, and you just kind of get those numbers. You work very hard if you make that kind of money, but dermatology seems to be one of the top dogs in physician assistant and nurse practitioner careers making close to or more than $200,000. This is totally um, just through the grapevine. I don't know this person, but I have a couple of friends that are dermatology physician assistants. And one of them recently told me he knows a PA that's been working for a good number of years, five or 10 years at least, maybe more. But he says that this PA makes 270 a year every year recently. So it's not like she had one good year, she worked really hard, like no, she made 270 for several years in a row, which is crazy, man. Like that's more than a lot of physicians make. 
So as a PA, working in dermatology, putting in tons of hours, hustling, you know, working really hard, being very good at what you do, uh, you know, not taking breaks, not taking a lot of time off. If you're RVU dependent, meaning revenue, what the heck is it? I can't remember what RVU stands for, but basically the more time off you take, the less money you're going to make, right? So basically just hustling a lot, not taking a lot of time off, being very good at what you do. Um, after a while, and you have that clientele built up and everything, and you just know how to hustle, how to work in that field, dermatology, you can make 200 or more, sometimes much more, close to 300 uh, as a dermatology PA. So keep that in mind. And then the last one I'm personally going to talk about, of course, is urgent care. This one might come as a surprise to some people because for whatever reason, a lot of people, when they think urgent care, they don't think one of the highest paid physician assistant, nurse practitioner specialties, but it actually can be. Again, very, very hard work. The numbers are very, very high. You're seeing a lot of people. People get burnt out pretty easy. But if you're in a good one with good support staff and you thrive in that kind of environment where it's just busy, 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 you don't look at your phone, you don't, you know, sit around and BS. Sometimes you don't get to eat. Sometimes you don't go to the bathroom. But like the day flies by when you're working in urgent care or at the ER. So if you like that kind of environment, you know, some people really do. And also the schedule is pretty cool because it's like 12 hour shifts. So you end up working two, three, four days a week. Well, maybe three or four days a week, maybe five. Uh, and then of course there's overtime to pick up. But if you guys know this uh, YouTube channel, it's called The PA Life. He's actually an urgent care physician assistant who consistently makes over $200,000 a year, working some overtime, working some like late evening shifts, nothing overnight. But uh, that guy reliably makes over 200K a year and he's not working like 90 hours. He's not working 80 hours. He's working like maybe 50, 60 hours, you know? And he's very good at what he does. He sees a lot of people but he makes 200,000 or more consistently year over year. And so the last part of this video, I wanna go through this article here from Becker's Hospital Review called Highest Paid Specialties for PAs. Sorry, this isn't for NPs, but they're pretty comparable, you know, uh, in a lot of ways. And so they, this is an interesting article. So this is from 2001, sorry, 2021, 2022 data. And their list, if you could see it here on the screen, of course, the top dog, Cardiothoracic surgery, just like I told you. Emergency medicine is right there. Urgent care is right there. Dermatology is right there. And then you'll notice right after that, you see a lot of other surgical subspecialties. So orthopedics, vascular, um, neurosurgery, cardio, things like that. Um, however, you'll notice that these numbers are quite a bit lower than what I told you. So what they're probably going off of here where they got this data is probably the AAPA annual salary report, and that one only reports salaries, so they may not have uh, considered bonuses, they may not have considered RVU bonuses, they may not have considered overtime. This is just straight up 40 hours a week salaries. I think that's where they got these numbers, and that's why these are quite a bit lower than what I just told you. Uh, still not too bad. I mean, this is well above the national average for a PA, which is $120,000 a year, so 140, dollars 134, dollars pretty good. But just from my practical experience, from knowing lots and lots of PAs, from being in the community, from actually seeing these job offers, <clears throat> maybe not for me, uh, but just like seeing these job offers on job listings and seeing how much their starting pay is offering without in, even any negotiation, I'm going to tell you that these and these specialties are definitely on the low side. Maybe a new provider working in ER, cardiothoracic surgery, urgent care might be in the like 130, 140 range, but once they get experienced once they really know what they're doing, once they become productive, once they don't have to ask a lot of questions from the supervising physician and they just know what they're doing, um, they can work fast, they can see a lot of people every day and they work consistently, they don't take a ton of time off. Uh, and once they're in that boat, they're hustlers, they work really hard, they work a lot. Uh, and depending, of course, on what part of the country they're in and what kind of contract they got, whether or not they negotiated for themselves, uh, these numbers are actually quite low. This one forty, one thirty thousand dollars a year for these specialties, very low. Uh, definitely the mid one hundreds, if not the upper mid one hundreds, one fifty, one sixty, one seventy. And then in those rare instances where they either get just the right contract or in the, they're in the right kind of part of the country that just like drastically needs these specialties, or for for whatever reason, the higher dollar contracts are provided to these people, they can definitely be approaching two hundred and sometimes exceeding. $200,000 a year or more. All right, guys. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that video all about how to make $200,000 a year as a physician assistant or a nurse practitioner. I'll see you in the next video.